Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Sufre Today, where we answer some of the frequently asked questions that we receive from the public on our social media platforms. And with us is the current lead of the scientific team in St. Vincent, Dr. Thomas Christopher. Hi, TC. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing Good. fine. Good. Um, so, TC, what can you tell us about the dome? What is the latest in terms of dome growth? Everyone is always curious to know what's happening with the dome itself. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good thing to, to know and to be curious about. We currently are working with a plan to do that survey once a week. We know the last one occurred around on the 1st of February, which was last Monday. Hopefully, we should be up on the summit on Wednesday to do another dome survey, and that should give us another volume. So the latest volume we have is just under um, 6 million cubic uh, meters, which was done on, on February 1st. So hopefully before the end of the week, we can produce another figure and, and, and have an idea of how fast it's growing. Mm -hmm. All right. And also we heard um, in the last week that the water in the hydrothermal system um, is drying out or has dried out and we're beginning to detect um, SO2, which is a, a volcanic gas. Can you tell us a little bit about exactly what that means? Yeah, um, basically, we should have been seeing SO2 since December, because as long as you have a, a volcano that's erupting, which, which this one is actually doing, you would expect to see sulfur dioxide coming out in your emissions. That was not the case when we started measuring in January. And as I said, we suspected that the sulfur dioxide was actually interacting with the water, reacting with the water and creating a mild sulfuric acid on the ground. So we were not seeing it. The, the water was actually hiding it from us. Now we started to see it on the 1st of February. And basically the, the idea is that there's less water to interact with the volume of sulfur dioxide that's coming off. So basically it's an it's a issue about how much water versus how much sulfur. We're still not seeing all of it because when we look at the, the gas chemistry, we still see that there's hydrothermal gases in it, but we're seeing more of it than we were in the past. So it's drying out, but it's not totally dried out yet. Okay, and why is it drying out? Is that because of the dry season or does that have something to do with the volcanic processes? It has to do with the eruption. You, you need to, um, I think the average person needs to understand how hot this, this um, magma is and how much of it is actually there. So you've got a, a really hot material and you've got a large volume of it. So basically it's heating up the ground. I mean, we've seen videos of the ground in the crater steaming, steam coming up to cracks in the ground. So it gives you an idea of how hot that environment is. And probably that steaming is actually some of the water that we're losing in the hydrothermal system coming up through the crater floor. So it's basically been boiled off, for want of a better word. Okay, and so the detection of SO2, SO2 is a magmatic gas, not so? Which means- Yes, it- Right. Yes, it so, is. Okay, so the detection of SO2, what does that mean or what does that tell us or is that useful for us at all in terms of understanding how this eruption might un unfold, whether it will continue to be effusive or it, if it may escalate to be explosive. What's the significance of it in that regard? Well, SO2 is, is, is the easiest gas for us to get a mass flux from. And if we, can, if we can get a mass flux of SO2 on a daily basis, as in how many tons of SO2 is coming off per day, we can have a good idea of how, of how fast the magma is coming out at the top because just like your, your cup, your cup, if you fill your cup to the, to the limit, it holds a fixed volume of water. And it's the same for the magma. There's a fixed volume of gas in a fixed volume of magma. So if you're seeing more gas, then you're degassing more magma. And I mean, one of the good things about um, being able to do the SO2 flux, you can do it more remotely. So it's safer for us to, to do that sort of work without having to go up to the crater rim. So it, it gives us a different sort of information from what we've been getting so far. So far, we've been just looking at the chemistry of the gases. And that tells us about 
depths, you know, where it's coming from and who's contributing. The flux of sulfur dioxide tells us how fast the magma is coming out. Mm. And we can do that. Okay, good. That's that's good. I'm glad we went through that. And um, yesterday you guys did some field work up at the Wallaboo Hot Springs. Do you have any findings from that that you'd like to share? Yes. We we had a, a report from someone who, who lives on island who frequently visits that hot spring and they reported that the temperatures were, were much hotter than they were used to and there was also a strong smell of sulfur. So we went there um I took some samples, I took some water samples from the actual um, spring, the hot spring. There was definitely a smell of sulfur. So I, I measured the emissions with the multigas, which is one of the instruments I use. And I actually found that there was hydrogen sulfide. So I think basically you, you've got increased um, gas emissions because there's a lot more gas around at the moment. You're generating a lot more gas because your, your volcano is actually misbehaving. So significant thing is that temperatures have gone up a bit, maybe about five or six degrees. And there's a lot more gas down there than, than normal. But it's not, it's not a dangerous place to be based on what we, we found. But it, there's subtle differences that if you're familiar with the place, you might, you might um, realize. Right, and so that's, would have been expected because the because we're actually in an in an eruption, not so. So you would have expected to have, to have had that kind of uh, result. Yes, I mean, it's it's difficult to say how your eruption would affect your hot springs or, or fumarole fields. Some of them will actually shut off. Some and in some cases it will create new ones. So it's going to restructure the whole dynamics of, of the system at shallow. Okay, well, thanks a lot, TC. Thanks for the update. And again, we're wishing you and the team all the best this week with your field work and whatnot and stay safe. And just wanting to remind everyone that NEMO and the UESRC are the official sources of information for the La Soufra eruption. So please follow us on our Facebook and Instagram handles. And also that uh, the visits to the volcano to the crater are still restricted at this time. So take care, everyone, and stay safe. Bye-bye.